The founder of Dermalogica is not who you think she is. And as a matter of fact, let's speak about how skincare companies are created. Because most people don't realize you don't have to have a degree. You don't have to be a doctor, an esthetician, or even have experience in cosmetic chemistry to start a skincare line. Sometimes people start skincare lines or brands just because they want to start a business or just because they see money and they want to cash in. And what this means for people like you and me is that sometimes when buying brands, we get some really great options, but other times we're buying things that don't work or that don't have the efficacy or the ingredients or the sensory things that we need to enjoy our skincare routine and have it work for us. Dermalogica is one of the original professional brands out there. They were developed in 1986 and it was by this lady named Jane. She recently wrote a book called Skin in the Game. And when I saw this picture right here, I was like, wait a minute. Is that Ellen DeGeneres? No, this is not Ellen DeGeneres. And I realized that I recognized her from an award that Obama gave her back in 2016. She was awarded a presidential ambassador for global entrepreneurship. And while that sounds great, at the same time, I was wondering, what is the story behind Dermalogica? Who really is Jane? What is this about putting your skin in the game? And is she really who she says she is? Dermalogica asked me to come speak at their headquarters. And I thought that this was the perfect time to do a little bit of investigative research, find out what's really going on behind the scenes. So I said yes, and I decided to jump on a plane. Good morning. It is 5.05 .05 in the morning. We are going to Los Angeles. Oh, wake up. I love you. <laughs> Much of the beauty industry thrives off of making us feel insecure about ourselves, as opposed to saying, hey, maybe this is a choice, or maybe this is something for health and hygiene, but it's not purely image-based, and maybe you could enjoy doing skincare as well. And the first brand that really adopted this was Dermalogica, and basically said, we care about what's going on on someone's face, and actually even deeper than their skin, about how they feel, who they are, because a skin therapist actually gives time and attention to those things. Dermalogica was actually one of the first brands that I ever used in aesthetic school, there were a couple that we had, but I've never fully understood where the line came from and who are the people behind it. We made it! Do you guys all down? Do you guys all down? I think so. We made it to the hotel. I'm going to take a little cat nap because this is important, and then we go get food, and then we do all of the work that we've been so behind on. I am awake. It's hot. I've also got this, which I'm considering it says pores, not perfection. And I think we're ready to go. It is time to see the star. We're just gonna have some fun, maybe film a collab together. Hello, how's Hi. it going? It's going great. We are having such a spread of food right now. All the snacks. We're very excited. Ooh. We're talking all the skincare. Fancy snacks. Thank you so much. Hooray. I'm four years old. You're really helping me out with my premature rheumatoid arthritis in case anybody asks. We will hang out again you. soon. Yes. If you're not already on the Sarah Palmyra train, the Sarah Palmyra. Sarah Palmyra. Sarah Palmyra train. Palmyra Palmyra. 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 But even as I was preparing for the next day to speak, I was wondering, who is Jane? Is she going to completely ignore me? Is she even going to know who I am? Will she be nice and speak to me and other people? And what are her favorite skincare products? Why did she launch this brand? And does she still smoke cigarettes? When first walking into the Dermalogica headquarters, we had to do those rapid COVID tests to make sure that everyone was safe. And I was actually pretty impressed by just the amount of safeguards that they had. And as we started to walk in, I didn't even realize that Dermalogica shares their headquarters with the Dermal Institute. It's basically an elevated skin school that Jane started. When the line was founded, they didn't just want this to be products. It's deeper than that. They wanted people to have access to quality
quality education to understanding skin. And something that Jane said later that day was that sometimes it's just about having someone touch your face. And that can be so healing for somebody who needs it. And as we walked through the facility, I actually saw a whole bunch of the dermatological products that I had recognized either from aesthetic school or from my own routine. And with full transparency, there are some dermatological products that I don't like, and there are some that I absolutely adore, such as the pre-cleanse and the daily microfoliant. And when just looking at these walls, I guess I didn't realize how extensive the lines really were. You know, they have the clear start line for acne, they have the professional line, and then as an esthetician, any esthetician who's licensed and certified can actually go and purchase professional products, such as advanced chemical peels, which I really wanted to try out, but I didn't purchase any just because they wouldn't fit in my suitcase, but it was really interesting to see all of these things laid out. Now, these were the products that were shown, but behind closed doors, there's actually a lot more going on. And Dermalogica was kind enough to have myself and Nye, you might know her as the Golden RX here on YouTube. I'm obsessed with her and I love her. She's even better in person, but they actually showed us what they've been working on. And I got to meet the cosmetic chemists, the people who actually work on these products, who do the clinical testing, who look at the research, who read the studies, and who actually formulate these products and go through hundreds of renditions on each product just to get it right. And they made me sign a bunch of paperwork and make sure that I'm not gonna leak anything on the internet before it's actually time to be launched. And I believe that these launches are going to come, I wanna say it's gonna be like summer or end of year 2022, but seeing the amount of research and studies and the literal brain power and the passion that goes in from the chemistry side was super, super thrilling. And there's actually a product that hasn't launched yet that I think is going to be one of my new favorites, just understanding my skin, my personal skin's needs, and just being able to see how their process is behind the scenes was wonderful because it is different. First off, their chemistry labs have open windows. So you can actually see what's going on. Chemists don't feel like they're locked inside of a lab box. And these chemists are also super passionate. They love beauty and skincare themselves. And some of them even shared some of their own skin concerns that they've gone through. And they also do so much testing on not just is the formula good, is it stable, but will it penetrate? Will it actually hold up? Will it fall apart if you have it in a certain temperature or environment? And you think that these things would be standardized, but did you know that not all cosmetic chemistry labs even have to do stability testing, meaning they don't even have to see if their product is going to break down in heat or in cold temperatures. And the fact that the chemists just seemed to care, they had their own personal stories in line with why they're working in beauty, hearing about how some people struggled so badly with skin conditions before learning about the chemistry of ingredients was something that I could personally really relate to. When I first saw Jane, she walked in with this yellow blazer. And at first I was like, ooh, is she gonna be cold? Like she has a short haircut. Like she looks like business. She looks like she's here to get to work and she isn't here to F around. But she started talking about why she had a broken hand. And she was telling us about how she was riding her bike and how she fell. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a real person. She cares about talking to us. She converses with people. She waves at people in the halls. She's not this high and mighty person with sunglasses who can't be touched. She started in skincare because of a passion and because she had eczema. And that was something that I didn't even know. And that's why she was telling me that they don't use lanolin and they don't use specific ingredients or artificial fragrances in their products. We got to go and start the panel where I got the opportunity to speak with Nye and Jane and someone else who works there named Heather about what's going on in the industry. How is social media changing things? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? And what is the difference between an esthetician, a skin therapist, somebody who helps with skin versus somebody that is focused on beauty or cosmetics or even a dermatologist. But it was wonderful to have this conversation so openly and to hear from an industry expert about how she sees all of these things weaving in and about how right now, like she has the opportunity to become a doctor. She could go to school and do it. She could become a dermatologist, but she stands with the fact that she's not and she's okay with that. And she speaks about how she doesn't have these fancy degrees and why that's okay for her. And because for her, being a skin therapist, helping with Dermalogica and the Dermal Skin Institute, that is her life's work. And what she does with education to help people understand and embrace their skin is what she cares about most. And she recognizes that and stands for it. She was speaking about how in hair salons, like everyone's getting their hair done, you can see everyone, they're chatting, right? But with skincare, 
people are hidden in these back rooms. It's walled off, it's unseen, it's quiet, and nobody ever talks about the insecurities or the feelings or the emotions that come along with skin. And as Jane was building both Dermalogica and the Dermal Skin Institute, she said, no, I'm gonna change that. And that's why all of the Dermal Skin Institute has windows. It's so that people don't have to feel hidden away in a back room. It's because skin, even with its flaws, should be seen, it should be appreciated, and it should be celebrated. And just hearing that and realizing that that is built into the literal foundation of the building that this company was built on, it just hits me so personally. And I honestly wonder if I had had the opportunity to study at the Dermal Skin Institute in 2009. I wonder if I would have saved myself a lot of turmoil and a lot of, um, pain. But at the same time, I think that that pain is what has given me power. And hearing Jane talk about her pain and the things that she has gone through, which, oh my God, this book gets deep. Um, it is just a beautiful reminder that we can turn that into a passion. And in Jane's instance, a literal brand, an education hub, and even a charity. A hundred percent of this book's proceeds go to charity. Found LA is a charity she started to help others in the industry because she wants to give back. And to even see that once Dermalogica started growing, you get offers to get bought once you've had some sort of success, right? And so, so many companies wanted to come in and just buy Dermalogica and take it off of Jane's hands. And she said, nah, I will only work with people who keep this goal, this mission, this philosophy in mind. And Unilever ended up being that partner and they said, okay, we're gonna give you money, we're gonna give you resources, we're gonna give you chemists, we're gonna give you all of the supply chains and the good things, but you get to still run this just the way you do. And to see that she didn't let money or attention or fame shape, change her as a person, and that even once she got that large brand partner, they didn't come in and change everything about her or what she does. They just made it easier for the people at Dermalogica and on Jane's team and at the Dermal Skin Institute to do what they already do that was revolutionary to me because it shows us what's possible. And I wasn't expecting this. I don't think Nye was either, but they also gave us facials. And you guys, as someone who gives facials, as someone who helps with others, it is an honor and a blessing to put my hands on someone else's skin and to hear them out and to touch their texture and to celebrate it and to help them with it. But it isn't always often that I get to have my face touched or that I get to go in for a facial, right? And um, they ended up surprising us with facials and uh, it was a truly wonderful and emotional experience that I wasn't anticipating. And even as I was flying home, once everything was said and done, I picked up the book and I started reading more and more of it. And I was shocked by the tenacity and the resilience of the human race. I was shocked about how everything you need truly is already inside of you. And sometimes we just need to see someone else do it to believe that we can. And I haven't read books in way too long. It's been a hot minute, but this is one that I cracked open and I didn't want to put it down. If you've ever wanted to become an esthetician or a dermatologist or just have a beauty brand or just understand what's going on in the skincare world, consider this book one of the ones that you need to read. There are books that I can recommend on ingredients, on anatomy, on dermatology and the diagnosis and treatment of different skin conditions. But if you are looking to understand the story of how a brand, how a company is actually built and what really goes on behind the scenes of the beauty industry, this is one that you absolutely need to pick up. And I've left the link here, even if you just wanna look at it and kind of open up that back cover, see who she is and what she's about and why 100% of the proceeds are being donated. Even if you wanna buy yourself a gift or buy this for someone else just because you want to do something that donates to charity just like a favorite moisturizer or a favorite sunscreen this is something that I cannot recommend enough I also want to just thank Dermalogica for being so open with me for literally letting me pick apart and expose everything like I was asking like really difficult questions to the chemists I hope they didn't feel attacked because I felt like I was like really going in deep and they met me with answers at every step of the way. I'm so grateful that not only they partnered with us on this and this experience, but they're also putting this forward into the world as something they believe in. And it's really not the brand that's so great. It's the people behind the brand. If you want to get inspired, if you want to put your own skin in the game, this is where you can do it. So no, the founder of Dermalogica is not who you think she is. 
She may currently have a broken wrist, but it is healing just the way she has helped heal so many other people's skin through her products or just through the education and the inspiration that is literally created and cultivated at the Dermal Skin Institute. I've left the link there and as always, the comments box is open. So if you've got requests, if you've got questions, or if you just wanna put your own skin in the game and share your own skin story, that space is there for you because this space is ours. Make sure that like button is hit, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.